Now, you may be moved to, to say, brother, can I help you? Is there something I can do for you? Just pray one for another. But your wife may say, son, this ain't time for that. She pulls a pistol out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pray later. Pop, pop, pop. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, was that grace? Say what? Well, but what about for you? <laughs> now remember when yeah. Satan rolled up on uh, Job and he asked God a question. Doth Job serve you for nothing? I mean, after all, look at how he's living. He's got more money than Jeff Bezos. So I bet you that if you let me touch him, he'll curse you to your face. And the Lord said, go on and do what you want to do, but don't kill him. Is that right? Now there is murder in the world. And there is a commandment. Does the commandment say thou shalt not kill or thou shalt not murder? Before you answer, let me ask you something. Forget about whether or not you think the wars are righteous or not. But if we get attacked by someone that you believe is an enemy, do you want to have some armed services to protect you? Or do you just want to start waving the white flag saying, you know, we love Jesus. Oh, I love Jesus. And they shoot now. <laughs> Come on now. And, then, and, 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 and one of them shoots you and they, they're not a good shot, so they just kind of wing you in the shoulder. And just when you're about to pull your pistol out, they say, oh, aren't you a Christian? Aren't you supposed to be turning the other cheek? And you think about it. And why are you thinking? <laughs> now, now, we know that the devil wants to kill us all. All of us. He wants us dead. Why? Because we will mess around and tell somebody the gospel message. That's the only reason, you know. He knows that you are going to heaven. He knows that. He actually knows that. He just does not want you to tell anybody else the truth so that they mess around, hear the gospel, and trust it. So in order to stop that, killing all Christians. Killing all Christians. Does that make sense? So then, it's justice for God to defend the righteous. Was it just that Jesus went to the cross for my sins? Where was the grace for him? <laughs> oh, only for me? Am I the only one who is suited as a recipient of grace? And yet the author and finisher of my faith went to the cross not for stuff that he's done. <laughs> Come on, man. Now, all of a sudden, I say, whoa, well, you know, Jesus, since you died for my sins, so I'm glad you took that way. I don't talk about, fuss about, well, you know, that wasn't terribly gracious to you. That was unjust. They whipped you all night long, nailed you to the cross. But what does the Father say? Oh, you got him there. But guess what? The first time he came, he came in peace. Come on now. And he offered salvation. Then he allows things to run their course. Go back and look at the Old Testament. Um, when they crossed over the River Jordan and they circled around um, the enemy and in Jericho and the walls came down what happened after that they went in were they committing murder no they killed and in some places the Lord said I want you to kill everything uh, this is in the Bible so I'm going to say something now that I'm, it's going to make me red in the face but you bear with me I want you to kill everything that pisses against the wall what's he talking about Kill 
men, women, children, donkeys, horses, cats and dogs. Kill them all. Wipe them out. Why? Because their iniquity was full. Does that make sense? Now we have a world that is stuck on unrighteousness. The Lord says, I, I'm not mad at you. I'm going to let you go ahead on and have it your way long as you can. And I'm going to let it reach a point where you will never turn back from your iniquity. And at that point, Grace is going to relieve you of your iniquitous commitment. Because the justice of God is not in conflict with the love of God and the mercy of God. When You better believe that when they rescued me on that bus, <laughs> oh, thank you. Because <laughs> had I been on there for another few minutes, the big rose would have killed, brother. He <laughs> wouldn't be sitting here today. <laughs> Does that make sense? And so we look for the exercise of justice. Now, what about hell? Now, you know hell is going to be well populated, unfortunately. Come on down. It ain't going to be empty. Well, is it grace that God... Um, has hell full of folk? Is it love? So he's allowed um, unrighteousness to run its course. How come? We asked this question a few weeks ago. I mean, if he knows he's going to fix it, why go through all this grief? Why don't you just come on and fix it? Because he's allowing the proof that apart from him, there is no redeemable quality at all. Ah, 20 minutes. We're going to leave in 15. But you, does that help? You? In other words, um, it's sort of interesting. We have a situation now where, um, you know, we have some folks that are arguing about the death penalty. And, the part, and you know how the argument goes, right? You said, well, the death penalty is not going to stop folk out there who see you killing this one from mm -hmm. killing him. But the Lord said, but that's not why I'm, I'm taking Carl out. Y'all may do something devilish, but his devilment has run its course. He won't do any more of that kind of crime. Does that make sense? The purpose of the death penalty is not to stop other folk from committing those types of crimes. And believe you me, when they roll up on our homes, we will have an opportunity to say, holy, holy, hold. But when they shooting and cutting, and you watching your loved ones getting chopped to pieces, how much holy, holy, holy can you stand? Now some of y'all can stand quite a bit. And they'll sweep your car carcasses up. <laughs> Come on now. And you and your loved ones and mom and, you say, mom and daddy, why didn't y'all save me? Jesus is coming into Jerusalem. And they said, save us. We need somebody to save us. Because we are being slaughtered day and night. And the folk that are slaughtering us are not interested in hearing justice. So who then? is going to exact the appropriate, and the Lord says, now vengeance is mine. What's he talking about? He says, Carl, <clears throat> I'm not sending you out to establish righteousness, because you can't do it. But when I come, I'm going to settle it. So now this passage we were looking at in 227, when he's talking about Jesus ruling with a rod of iron, that is only for a 1,000 year period. That's through the millennium. For those of you who are familiar with that, and who's ruling with him? Believers. Mm. So who else is going to be cracking heads? Us. Come on now. Wait a minute, Carl, 
老师去会配，中了。<笑><笑>
Now, up until a point, you know, we may be ready to listen to reason. The other person has a different point of view. We have one point of view, they have another. We go back and forth. But at some point, I kind of stiffen. And not because I'm right, but because I've decided, well, you're wrong. <laughs> and so I'm going to stay right there with you being wrong. And the Lord says, now, Carl, there's none righteous, no, not one among y'all. So even when you are right, is that righteousness anything other than filthy rags? Huh? He's talking about how we handle each other now. This is and how we ought to be presenting ourselves to the world. Whose righteousness then do we advocate? Not mine. Because mine smells. <laughs> I wish I had time to talk about the filthy rags. You know what they were, right? Now you all know this. The world has not always had charming. <laughs> So the filthy rags that he's talking about were the rags that were used for um, human hygiene. Come on, man. In the daily sense. That's what the Lord is saying about the filthy rags. And so because, my goodness, stop that. Because of the and what he's talking about is whenever we take a position and we stiffen in that position, we want to make sure that our position is based on a righteousness that is not ours, okay. but God's. Ten minutes. We've only gotten to one passage. All right, question and answer. I said there was a question. That was a statement. The statement is, God, now, and the, and the overarching question we're dealing with is, is the Bible true? Is, can it be believed? And we started with a statement where God says, well, whatever you may think of Jesus, I'm going to tell you what I think. Actually, what I know. He is God. You see that? Mm -hmm. That's what it said. And he is going to come and fix it. And when he comes to fix it, He's not coming the next time preaching. He's coming to bring justice, which is the grace of God applied to iniquity. Otherwise, he would just let it run its course. Is that what we do? You ever seen a spoiled child? A spoiled child. Look, a child could be 67 years old. <laughs> Spoiled rock. You ever seen one? I try not to look in the yeah. mirror too often. <laughs> but when I do see him in the mirror, um, he is just as comfortable in his, I'm just as comfortable in my own mess as I can be. Doesn't bother me at all. And so because I'm spoiled, Whatever I say, whatever I want, whatever I pursue, I deserve it. I'm going to go after it the way I want to. I don't care what anybody else has to say because I'm just spoiled. I'm a brat. Does that make sense? Well, at some point, Carl needs to be reeled in because at the rate he's going, he's going to destroy himself and others if justice is not applied. <clears throat> Turn now to um, James, fourth chapter of James, mm -hmm. and then we're going to go home. Five minutes? Yes, sir. It's, it's 1051, but I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the only one that can tell time. <laughs> um, I want you just to look, when you get home, I want you to read verses 1 through 10, but I'm going to start with verse 1. I want somebody to read fourth chapter, the first verse in James, and then I want somebody else to skip to the tenth verse. Read the first 
verse in the fourth chapter and then the tenth. So James 4.1. From which come wars and fights among you? Am I not hence? Even have you lost that war in your memory? By the way, who's James writing to? Anybody? He's writing to believers. And what is he saying about believers? We just says, if to the extent that we are we have decided that our righteousness is superior to the righteousness of God, we go to war with each other. You ever seen it? Households falling apart. Everybody in there snarling. Even the dog is snarling. <laughs> and you feed him. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> if you let the dog out, he because sometimes he wants to go out. But after a while, when he comes, he he, he banging to come in the door. He said, "Well, you know, you you an, a wild animal, aren't you? You an animal, not wild anymore. The foxes." They got holes going out there and find one for yourself. No, the dog wants to come back in the house. That's all that snarling. Mm -hmm. Oh, now you want to be civilized. <clears throat> Read the 10th verse. 4th chapter, verse 10. Humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord, and He will exalt you. Mm. You know, that's very difficult to do. Because when I'm right, I'm right. <laughs> I don't care what the Lord has to say about it. I'm right, and that's that. And whether you nor God tells me something other, I'm sorry, I'm not interested, because I'm right. <laughs> what does God say? First of all, I'm, we have all this turmoil. This is within the family of God. So you, we talked about the civil war. Well, now let's look at a few examples, and then we're going to go home. But we answer the question, can the Bible be believed? And we're going to end with these examples. The genocidal civil war between the Yoruba and the Igbo in Nigeria. These are historical facts. Those color people were killing one another. And if you ever see a Yoruba and an Igbo, you can, it's, and somebody tells you, well, this is one people that's different from the other, you say, huh? Mm -hmm. What? Huh? The Civil War. Christians on both sides. What was the point of the war? The, remember the first, fourth chapter, verse one. What's the purpose of the, what, what is driving the, the angst that leads to warfare? My lusts, stuff I want. What was the issue? The South had an economy that was agrarian. The North had developed an economy that was tending toward the industrial. So when the North was trying to tell the South, you know, y'all need to stop all that slavery. The South said, wait a second, you're depriving us of all of our livelihood. How are we going to live? And there are Christians on both sides who would not humble themselves and come together and come up with a solution from God. So what did we come up with? I'm going to kill you. These are Christians now. you got to go. I'm going to kill your mama and your daddy, your children and your pigs. All your animals, I'm going to kill them all. Next example. The Rwandan genocidal conflict between the Tutsi and the Hutu. You ever seen a Tutsi? We saw a movie the other night. And there was a woman who had believed the Tutsis were the ones who had been practicing the genocide against the Hutu. So she thought she was a Hutu. Until near the end of the movie, she was, it was disclosed to her that, no, you're a Tutsi. And she fell apart. She fell apart. Because up until that point, she thought that her people had been victimized. And she wanted justice. And what she kept saying was, you Tutsis should be brought to justice. And what did she find out? Oh my God, I'm Tutsi. You don't see that thing, do you? Next example. Two families of French origin. We talked about this before. The House of Val uh, Valois, V-A-L-O-I-S, and the House of Plantagenet, both French. The House of Val uh, Valois was in France. As they had control of the French government. The House of Plantagenet had control over the English government. They're the same people, both French. They fought a war that lasted over a hundred years. Next example, the brutal warfare between the Sioux and the Chippewa. We talked about that. These are Indians that folk, before anybody else got here, folk was killing each other. For what? Because of our lust. I'm right, you're wrong, I'm going to kill you. Next example. In India, you have, uh, in northern India, 
That's where the light skinned ones come from. You know, light skinned Indians, they don't like the dark ones. Mm. Oh, shoot, you could come back as a roach. You're going to be a rat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, no, don't even touch, don't, don't serve my food, don't cook, don't make my clothes. I don't want nothing to do with none of y'all. But up north, the light skinned Demasa and the light skinned Carby killing each other. The northeast, that's northeast. Now, that's, that's not over there by Pakistan. It's the northeast. Come on now. Boston and Philadelphia, they just killing them. Anyway, next example. This is all, these are historical facts. Remember the question? Is the Bible real? Well, what did the Bible just say? Oh, you're going to kill each other because of what? Not for righteousness sake. Huh? Next one. Muslim genocide in Turkey. We just saw a movie last night. You ought to see it, The Promise. Um, the Muslims, these are the Muslims, 1914, started exterminating Armenians. You know who Armenians are? Ever heard of Kim Kardashian? She's Armenian. Did you know that? Her people were being exterminated. 75% of the Armenians in Turkey slaughtered by the Turkish government systematically. Chinese and the Taiwanese you know where the Taiwanese came from? China. <laughs> Somebody ought to say something. They, they ran them out of China because they had a difference of opinion. They said, okay, forget it, we leave it. And Chiang Kai-shek and his army escaped slaughtering the mainland and went to Taiwan and they still fight. <laughs> Japanese can't stand the Koreans, and so on and so forth. Well, you get home, read Romans 7:24. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Are we going to fix it? Now you ask the question. Is the Bible trustworthy? Let's close with a word of prayer. <laughs> Dear Father, mercy divine, you have told us about ourselves. And every people on the planet of the earth has literal historical evidence that we know is true, that just so happens to be exactly what you said would be the case. Let us pray with and for our beloved pastor teacher whom you have sent to us to enlighten us about the truths from you, that the righteousness that we propose will not be ours in our homes, in our communities in our churches, but yours. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Lord have mercy. <laughs>